Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 33. And what you're going to see is you're going to see a map drawn out by Moses of the wilderness journey from Egypt to the Jordan River, where Moses died. Now, we got to make a remarkable remark here that when the book of Numbers and what we see here and what you'll see in Chronicles is God is an excellent bookkeeper. Some of these places we're going to name in this chapter, no one knows where they are. Some of these places we do know where they are. And you can follow it with a Bible map and get a zigzag kind of location. But God knows exactly every one of these footprints. Jesus said that the very heads of our hairs, the very hair of our heads are numbered. So we need to give account that Jesus said by every idle word, man is going to give an account. What are we going to learn in Numbers 33, this boring chapter about a bunch of names we've never seen, probably will never see? God knows what streets you've been in. God knows what the name of the places you've been in. God knows the addresses where you've been. These are the journeys of the children of Israel which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to they're going out. So God told Moses, keep a record where you go. And here's the record recorded in Numbers 33. And they departed from Ramesses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with their high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn which the Lord has smitten among them upon their gods, Exodus 12, 12. Also the Lord execute judgment. All those plagues that were done in Egypt was a God. When we went through that, if you get Exodus 12 and 13, you get those plagues, the frogs, the darkness, the blood, the Nile, the fish, the locusts, they were gods of Egypt. And they didn't learn their lesson when they came to Aaron and said, up, oh, make these gods. And, oh, man, all of a sudden, by accident, out came a calf. A calf is a national, worldwide god. And the children of Israel removed from Ramesses and pitched in Sokolov. And they departed from Sokolov and pitched in Etham, which is the edge of the wilderness. And they re removed from Etham and turned again unto Pihira, right? Some of these names I am not going to pronounce correctly, and if you ill me for it, oh well. At least I can say I read the Bible all the way through. Which is before Bel Zephon. Notice the Baal. That's, my, that's a deity. That's a god, fallen god of that place. And they pitched before Migdal. And they departed from before Pyrrhira and passed through the midst of the sea in the wilderness and went three days' journey into the wilderness of Etham. And pitched at Mara. And they removed from Mara. That's the place where the waters were bitter. And came to Elam. And in Elam were twelve fountains of water. And three score and ten palm trees. And they pitched there. If they only waited. If they only gave God an, ar an argument. The next place coming up was that place of water. And we saw that in Exodus. Uh, Exodus 15, 27. 
And they removed from Elam and camped by the Red Sea. Oh, wait a minute, Red Sea. We'll go back to verse 8, the midst of the sea of the wilderness. And if you look at a map, you'll see exactly where we are. There is no way possible that they went north through the land of Philistines and passed through the Sea of Reeds when you got two major seas here, and it says the Red Sea, and the Red Sea is nowhere near the Sea of Reeds. No way. You got to completely reject the Bible. So they camp at the Red Sea. What happened at the Red Sea? We don't see here. Here comes the Egyptian army. And they removed the Red Sea and camped in the wilderness of sin. Well, that verse 11, that's when the entire, you know, the waters were parted. Egyptians went in there and they were drowned. The wheels fell off the chariots. And they had a little party, a little celebration that God avenged them of the Egyptians on the sea. And we're not talking about those things. We're looking at direction. And like I said, some of these places you can't find, they don't know where they are, but you could take a map and you can draw a line and get the estimate. And this is not going to take you to way the Red Sea, I mean the, the Sea of Reeds. And so when you got a Bible map and then when they show the wilderness journeys and that goes north up along the Mediterranean Sea area, it's 100% wrong. I'm sorry. In verse 12, and they took their journey out of the wilderness of sin and encamped in Dovka. And they departed from Dovka and encamped in Alush. They removed from Alush and encamped in Riphadim. That's Exodus 17, where there was no water for the people to drink. And they departed from Riphadim and depart and pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. Oh, this is where they're going to stay. For over at least a minimum of 80 days, Moses went up 30 days, 40 nights, comes down, breaks the Ten Commandments, whips them for that, that idol they made. He goes back up another 40 days and 40 nights. And pitched at Kibar Hakafa. And they pitched in Kibar Hakafa and encamped in Hazra. Not the people of the world looking at American names and laughing, you know. And they departed from Hethroth and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma and pitched in Rimen Perez. And they departed from Rimen Perez and pitched in Libna. And they removed from Libna and pitched in Risha. And they journeyed from Risha and pitched in Kehaliath. And they went from Kehaliath to pitch in Mount Shafer. And they removed from Mount Shafer and camped in Harda. They removed from Harden and pitched in McCullough. They removed from McCullough and camped in Taha. And this is so bad when you get your tongue tied on one word, you got to do it again. And they, part, and they depart from Taha and pitched in Tara. And they removed from Tara and pitched in Mecca. And they went from Mecca and pitched under Heshma. And they departed from Heshma and encamped in Mosra. And they departed from Mosra and pitched in Ben Jacklin. They removed from Ben Jacklin and camped in Horba Gad Giddak. 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 Can't say that. That's a tongue twister. And they removed from Hammer Tongue Twister and pitched in Jot Badhat. They removed from Jot Badhat and camped in Ebron Ha. And they departed from Ebron. Now, these are the spellings and the pronunciation in the English language. This is not the Hebrew language. Remember, so we're getting absolutely completely right. We can't because it's been translated into English. You want to get it 100% right, you got to read it in the Hebrew, and I'm not for Hebrew and Greek. 33, and they went from Hora Giggag again, and pitched from Jabahath. And they moved from Jabahath and encamped in Ebra. And they departed from Ebra and encamped in Ezon Gadber. Get your mouth down. And they removed from the east of Gagber and pitched in the wilderness of Zin. Oh, I know that one. Which is Kadesh. Numbers 20, verse 1. Look at all the books of the Bible you've gone through in just 36 verses. And removed from Kadesh and pitched in the Mount Hur. At the edge of the land of Edom. So look on a map to show you where Edom is. Moab. Amorites, 
And Aaron the priest went up unto Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there in the fourth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the fifth month. Well, look at that. We got a date when Aaron dies. And Aaron was 123 years old when he died in Mount Hor. King Irid, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south of the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. And they, devour, devour, yeah, excuse me. they departed from Mount Hor and pitched in Zalmoth. And they departed from Zalmoth and pitched in Punnam. They departed from Punnam and pitched in Oboth. And they departed from Oboth and pitched in Ari Jabirim in the border of Moab. So Moab is north of Eden. They're going north. And they pitched from Iam and pitched in Debun Gad. And they removed from Debun Gad and pitched in, in, in camp in Amabalatham. And they removed from Amabalatham, pitched in the mountains of Abraham before Nebo. And they departed from the mountains of Abraham and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. Now this is where we are now. And they pitched by Jordan from Beth Jehazman even unto the Abel Shittim in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. All. They don't do that. And destroy all their pictures. What would that be? Go tear down all their bulletin boards. And their posters. And destroy all their molten images. Get into those churches that have idol idolatry and places where they sell concrete uh, images and concrete statues and all that. Destroy them, God says. Destroy the pictures. What's wrong with America and her constitution? You allow religions to do in this. You allow them by law, you can have what God despises. And then you turn around and say, God, and we trust, and God bless America. Not with this junk. You can. As a nation under God, you guys say, that stuff has got to go. And you get Christians born again, Bible Christians. Oh, we just love and hunker the Constitution. Oh, the freedom of religion. No, not the freedom of religion. The freedom to serve the God of the Bible and do right and take that religion and send it off to hell. You're not going to have a revival in this country when you allow this stuff that God says, destroy it. Are you for going to a Catholic church and breaking all that stuff up after what it's done to my family? Sending them off to hell? And quite, that means completely, totally pluck down all their high places, which you will read later on in Israel's future from here, which is Israel's history, and Judah. They will have high places. They will have church with buildings like this, with all this junk on every street, and you can find it in Daytona Beach, Florida, in 2018. And nothing being done for God. And we got the Constitution right. And you make fun of all these glass tower uh, religions. And all these, these people have millions and billions of dollars of ministries and all that. You allow them. You allow them. God said get rid of them. God's order for a government is God as king. Never a president. Israel sinned when Samuel, Samuel told Israel, you sin when you ask for a king. You reject God, and then you get the mess. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land. Well, we did that with the Indians. We put them on reservations. 
And now as a nation, we're trying to say, oh, we can't allow illegal immigra immigrants and we can't allow these people to come in our country. Well, the Indians and Native Americans allowed us to come in and look what happened. And look at the conditions they are in today. There was a time that missionaries went out to those Native Americans. They received Christ. They were trained in the way of the Bible, went out and missionary. But look at the mess they're in today. Look what America is doing to them today. Maybe you're reaping what, you're, what you sowed. Be careful. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that he shall also reap. Maybe they'll put us on reservations. It's only what we did. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein. For I have given you the land to possess it. Now this is the land of Palestine. This is the Jewish people. This is their heaven. There is a new earth coming one day. That will be for the Jew. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein. For I have given you the land to possess it. If you don't do it, you're going to turn into the sodomy. You're going to turn into the idolatry. You're going to turn into the false of worship, worship false gods. And you'll read that in Jeremiah. You'll even have a Christmas tree. Jeremiah chapter 10. You shall divide the land by lot for inheritance among your families. Joshua. The book of Joshua. And to the more... You shall give the more inheritance. The more children, the more you get. And to the fewer, you, sh you shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. Now, what's his lot? Joshua sends him out. He goes, go out there. I want you to come up with a book. I want you to put where every rock is, where every tree is, where every mountain is, where every valley is. We're going to draw a line. We're going to say, okay, draw straws for this land. Okay. This, this family gets this one. All right, for this valley, let's draw straws or whatever they, how they do it. All right, they get this valley. That's the lots. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers, the 12 tribes, you shall inherit. But, now God knows. God is all-knowing. But look at this free will condition. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land. God's not going to make you do anything. He will give you a conditional cause. If you will not drive the inhabitants before you. Then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes. Ouch. And thorns in your side. What is the America running today that they're throwing God of the Bible and his word of God. They're throwing it out. And they're bringing all this other nonsense in. They're bringing all these religions in. you got the prayer mats in the schools and all that. And look at what's going on. There's no righteousness in the land. There's no righteousness when Jeremiah's around. You know how many convicts, the converts that Jeremiah got? Absolutely one. You know how many Noah had in his, in his ark? Seven. And the guy challenged me, oh, where's the fruit of your of your work in the ministry, all that? How many did Jesus have at the cross at him? His mother and John and a few women. Where, when Paul gives his farewell message, everybody's gone from him but Luke. One man goes off into the world and the rest of them are going off into ministries. That pricks in your eyes. That don't sound very well. I don't know exactly what that is, but. Oof. And thorns in your side. Sides. That's like you're, you're walking down a pathway and there's just prickers and thorns. And many of times I've been in a situation like that as a kid. You come out all cut up. You're all sore and your mom's ready to ream you out. And shall vex you. In the land wherein you dwell. Moreover it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you. As I thought to do unto them. Now what did God want to do with them? He wanted to kick them out of the land. What did God end up doing by the end of Jeremiah? The end of, of, of kings and all that. He kicked them out. All right, I, religious freedom. And that's fine and hunky dory. But look at the end thereof. 
England that came up with the King James 1611 Bible. Not even 400 years. Look at the mess that nation is, and America's falling right behind her. You want a godly, under God religion, where God of the Bible is blessing you, you got to put this textbook, the Bible, in the public school system and teach those children from, from the kindergarten grade all the way to they graduate with a diploma in high school from Genesis to Revelation. This is what God says is good. This is what God says is not good. This is what you're to do. This is not what you're to do. And if you commit this crime, you're not going to spend the rest of your life in jail like Manson. But we're going to execute you for your crimes. If you're guilty, we're going to execute you. God has a standard, and when you reject God, you're going to end up in a mess. America's only going to get worse. This world's only going to get worse because Satan's coming, and he's going to take care of it all. And boy, believe me, Satan will show you no mercy. He will show you no grace like God as your king over a nation. God's merciful, long-suffering. If you allow him to reign, if you allow him to take over your nation and, and your people, you do much better. But by the time we get to Jeremiah, they don't do what they're supposed to do.